Welcome to week four of Under God. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we come before you thankful for this life, thankful for your word, which is truth, sets us free. It's authority. Father, I pray that we would have a hunger for your word. I pray as we open it, you would speak life into us. You would change us by the power of your word. We worship you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. The name above all names, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, would you turn to John, the Gospel of John, John chapter 1, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 5 and then uh, move over to verse 14. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Verse 1 reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Verse 3, All things were created through Him, and apart from Him not one thing was created that has been created. In Him, verse 4, In Him was life. And that life was the light of men. Verse 5, that light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. So we see that the word, word, capital W, refers to Jesus. That in the beginning, Jesus was, was, was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. We see the unity uh, among the Godhead, God the Father and God the Son. That God was a part of, uh, Jesus was a part of uh, creation. Uh, didn't just, didn't just, just appear, but he's always been. He is the Alpha and Omega's revelation uh, describes him to be. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. He brought light into the darkness that light shines in the darkness and yet the darkness did not overcome it uh, for years most people in our country embraced jesus uh, for years most people embraced jesus uh, but this is no longer true i mean would you just pause and consider this for a moment uh, what you once knew uh we don't quite uh, know anymore uh does, does that make sense uh we, we used to hear the name of Jesus. Uh, we used to pray in public places. We used to see scriptures. Uh, uh, I mean, all of these things. And, and there's been a turn. There's been a turn in our country. According to Barna Research, 48%, 48% of Americans identify as post-Christian. There's, there's some connection with Christianity. But for the most part, they've rejected, they've rejected it. It's not that they don't know, it's just that they simply don't care. We are quickly becoming a post-Christian nation, much like Europe. Uh, it's a sad state, really. It's a sad state, but what an opportunity to make Jesus known. What an opportunity for the church to be the light in this darkness. See, faith in Christ has moved from the center to the fringe. Uh, it has moved from something uh, being something positive to to being a threat. I mean, it's it's almost like you bring up the name of Jesus and 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 and, and you're attacking someone when when you're just saying, "Hey, he's the one who died for me. Uh, he's the one who gave his life for me. He's he's the one who loves me when no one else loves me. His love can't change." I mean, I mean, uh, but it, but it's like it's it's a threat now. And as the world gets darker. The light shines brighter. I don't want you to miss this. And in all the darkness and, and all the sadness, really, as the world gets darker, the light shines brighter. You and I are that light because we have the light of Jesus living inside of us. As Je Jesus didn't tell us to, to go... Uh, to go hide from the world. Uh, but 
rather to go make disciples. We, we know that from the Great Commission, Matthew 28. He didn't tell us to go hide. Uh, he told us to go and be light. He told us to go and, and to make disciples among the nations. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we looked at this, this truth that we don't run from culture, but we are called to influence it. We're called to be influencers. You and I, as the church, followers of Jesus, are called to influence culture, to not be influenced by culture, but rather influence culture. And, and so the question today is, how do we faithfully live for Jesus in a post in a post-Christian culture. Don't miss this. How do we faithfully live for Jesus in a post-Christian culture? I believe the answer to that is found in verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. Would you look at that verse with me? John chapter 1, verse 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That, that's Jesus descending to earth he came, he was born as a baby in Bethlehem. We're entering the Christmas season, praise God. Uh, we observe his glory, the glory as the one and only son from the father. Don't miss these words. Full of grace and truth. Do, do you see that? Jesus, full of grace and and truth. How do we faithfully live for Jesus in a post-Christian culture? How do we faithfully live for Jesus in a post-Christian culture? Uh, we do so with grace and truth. Would you write those words down? Grace and, and truth. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is leaning, uh, le leaning far one way or, or the other. We have to be careful to keep a balance as uh, uh, Bible believing, uh, Bible believers, we, we have to be careful to keep a balance here. Uh, and truth and grace help us to keep the balance. The truth is, is, is this, this is, this is what the Word of God says. This is what the Bible says. Grace is, is something that, man, we just don't deserve. It, we just don't deserve. We don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve this this home or, or this car. Uh, we don't deserve uh, uh, anything in this life. That, that's grace. I, I don't deserve it. Truth, the Bible says it. Uh, truth without grace leads to rules and rebellion. Would you write that down? Truth without grace leads to rules and rebellion. We talk about rules. I'm talking about legalism. Have you ever heard that term? Oh, you're legalistic. Stop being so legalistic. Uh, I grew up in a very legalistic movement. Uh, a very legalistic movement. Rules. Uh, legalism. Uh, I mean, it's this thing of there no no movies, no lipstick, no secular music, no dancing. Uh, uh, I mean, it was just rule after rule after rule. Truth without grace leads to rules and rebellion. Listen, the quickest way to raise a rebellious teenager is rules without relationship. Don't miss this, parents. Rules without relationship. You want to raise a rebellious teenager, uh, then then make sure make sure you press in on the rules and you leave out the relationship. You leave out the relationship. Uh, grace without truth leads to do whatever. And believe whatever. Grace without truth leads to do whatever and believe whatever. It's this, it's this thing of a license. <laughs> uh, much like when, when, when you came to that point, when, when you took that test you, and you passed and, and you had that license, it's like this newfound freedom, right? It's this newfound freedom. And I can do whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. It's, it's that this idea God understands and it, it, it's, it's, it's your life and no one has the right to tell you how you ought to live. Believe whatever. It's this idea circulating around a word called relativism. And this word relativism means that there's no single objective truth. There's no single objective truth. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. 
right? Have you ever thought that or heard that? As long as, you, as, long as I'm happy, ah, it, nothing else matters, right? Uh, as long as, as you're sincere, it doesn't matter what you believe. As long as you're sincere, it's your, I mean, you really believe it, that's okay. You know, as long as, as you're sincere, you own it. As long as you don't hurt anyone else, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. It's relativism. There, there's no single objective truth. Listen, church, we need grace and truth. We need grace and truth. It's interesting that in verse 14, grace is listed before truth. Do, do, do you see that? Grace is listed before truth. We need to lead with grace. And if we're honest, it's, it's something we really struggle with. It's something the church hasn't done a good job with leading with, with grace. I mean, we're all about truth and praise God for truth. We need truth, uh, but we also need grace and we need to lead with, we need to lead with grace. So discovery will be a safe place for people to belong before they believe. And the church, for the most part, ha has not had that idea. You have to believe first, then you can belong. And we've just flipped the script. We've just flipped the script because we want to be a community that welcomes people with their questions, with their struggles. And we want to, by our lifestyle, we want to point them to Jesus, who is the only one that can transform their lives. We will be a safe place for people to belong before they believe. Our message can't be change your behavior, then you can be one of us. Like, go clean yourself up. You've heard many people, I got to just, I got to get this thing, I got to get my life together before I can can come to the church or come to Jesus, right? Uh, our message can't be that. It can't be change your behavior, then you can be one of us. No, our message is come and follow Jesus and let him change you. Do you see how we're leading with grace? But there's also truth because at the end of the day, it's Jesus. It's always been Jesus. It will always be Jesus, the only one who can truly change mankind. See, this post-Christian generation is so uh, skeptical about truth. Uh, the post-Christian generation isn't searching for certainty. They're searching for honesty. They just want people to be honest. They, they want people to be real uh, and raw. And if we're honest, we we haven't always gotten it right. All right, I just said that a moment ago. We, we haven't always gotten it right. If you don't like Christians, listen, I understand. Uh, half of them drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, if you've been hurt by someone in church, I'm not surprised. There's hypocrites in, in the church, just like there's hypocrites in any store or restaurant that you'll frequent. Uh, but, but listen, truth and grace. We have to own uh, truth and grace. Truth isn't restrictive, repressive, or even op oppressive. The truth is freeing, liberating, and and life-giving. Amen. Truth is, is freeing, liberating, and life-giving. Uh, take it all the way back to Genesis, the Garden of Eden. Do you remember the account? Adam and Eve, God said you can eat from any tree except this one. Now pause for a moment in the story. It, it, he didn't give them that, 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 that rule, if you will, uh, to be a killjoy. Like he wasn't trying to kill all their fun but it was to give them life. It was to give them life. See, truth isn't just rules and morals. Listen, truth is a person and his name is Jesus. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus alone sets us free. And, and, and church, we need grace and truth. We need grace and truth. Jesus was full of grace and truth. He he confronted the uh, the hypocrisy. That that's truth. He confronted the hypocrisy uh, uh, of the religious leaders of the day. That that's truth. And he comforted sinners. That's grace. Do, do you see this? He was full of Jesus was full of grace and truth. 
the truth. Jesus turned over the, the, the tables uh, when, when shady business dealers were, 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 were ripping people off in the temple. Do, do you remember that account? That, that, that's truth. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes that I made mean, us messy. But that, that was truth. Jesus was full grace. He, he invited tax collectors. Known as the scum of the earth. He, he invited these tax collectors and criminals into relationship. And that through the relationship, they would then change the world for the glory of God. Jesus was full of truth and grace. Truth. Jesus called the, the Pharisees uh, snakes, <laughs> deceivers. And on the other hand, Jesus met an adulterous woman at, at a well and offered her living water. Offered her living water. Jesus, full of grace and truth. Jesus, full of grace and truth. I'm reminded of the, the account when the religious leaders pulled this adulterous woman on another account pulled her uh, out of her home and uh, and it was Jesus who said whoever is without sin pick up the stone and throw it first and he gets down in the ground and begins drawing a line in the ground so Jesus was a line crosser he he crossed the line. People are the other side of the line. Listen, we don't draw lines to keep people out. We cross lines to bring people in. That's what grace and truth is all about. That's the calling on your life and my life as the church. We are called to be the light of the world in a, in, in a very dark world. But nevertheless, the light of the world. Jesus Christ himself shining through our lives, our speech, our actions. People seeing a difference in us. That's what true freedom really is. Would you bow your heads and would you close your eyes just for a moment? And would you just say, Lord, what is my response to this message today what is my response to this message today would you just simply ask the lord that 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 question what is my response today maybe you've been struggling with grace and truth maybe you've been leaning one way uh, like really hard and, and and man you've got this you got truth but there's no grace or you got grace but there's no truth and so today your prayer would be lord help me to help me to grow in in the area that I'm that I'm lacking that I'm that I'm that I'm weak in help me to be like Jesus full of grace and truth father come before you and i ask that you would empower us to be men and women that are full of grace and truth. Lord, to be men and women that are daily growing in grace and truth. Father, change us. Help us as we open up your word to, to know truth and to see grace that runs all throughout your scriptures. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be like you. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us today. If you're ready to cross over that line, to make a life-changing decision to follow Jesus, would you text the word SAVED? Would you text the word SAVED? Let us know. We want to celebrate with you. The number is going to be in the comments. Would you just text the word SAVED and we'll follow up with you. Uh, we're going to receive the offering at this time. I want to encourage you to be faithful in supporting the mission of Discovery to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. 
And so today it's, it's pretty simple. You can text any amount to 84321. And click on Discovery Church. Text any amount to 84321. You can also go to discoverychurch.co and click on the giving link. Last, lastly, as we close uh, today, I want to invite you to our Christmas Eve Eve uh, worship experience at our new building at 4441 South 25th Street. It's going to be an exciting night. Would you just go ahead and mark your calendars? December 23rd, that's a Wednesday night. We have two worship experiences, one at 6 p.m. and one at 730 uh, online reservation seat reservations are going to be available this week uh, but for now mark your calendars christmas eve eve hey god bless you and we will see you next week as we kick off a new teaching series entitled home for christmas have a great week